Hello, I'm Miss Linnea Lark, and today's video is the first in a series dedicated to showing you ways to alter wheel thrown pottery using a variety of hand building techniques. Up first, coiling. <laughs> Everybody hates coils. What's the deal? This is going to be fun, I promise. Before you start messing around, it's a good idea to have a design in mind of what you're going to create. This is especially true for coils because they're thin, they dry out and crack easily, especially when they're overworked. If you bend them back and forth enough, you'll totally break them. I started my favorite design and ended up doing a combo of the two. You'll see I'm starting out with a leather hard bowl that has already been wheel trimmed, so it's important to do that on your own. And it's also very important to keep your pot at the leather hard stage. So you need to be bagging it and wrapping it between building it and adding the quill construction you're about to see. You'll also see I have a pile of extruded coils. You'll need some type of extruder to get even and consistent coils, but if you're into that homemade vibe, you can always roll some of your own. If you notice, I have a ridiculous amount of coils. This is because the extruder needs a certain amount of clay to even push the clay through, so it's best to share your coils with students around you, or put them in a damp box and use them for a later project. I used the half inch die hole for these coils, but in retrospect, I kind of wished I had gone a little bit smaller. Oh well, living and learning. But if you do go smaller, the clay will be weaker and construction will be harder. So you kind of have to be aware of your skill level and how difficult of a challenge you're up for. I started kind of big, because it's the first time I've ever done this. So now that I kind of know what I'm gonna do, I start forming my design with coils. Make sure you cut the end of your coil with the correct angle so it lines up well with the contour of your pot. Because my design is a mirror image, I make the design twice. I lay the second coil right on top of the first design so I can be sure that they are the same size and design. Time to slip and score. I want to keep these coils from bending as soon as possible. I want them to hold that shape. So I'm going to go ahead and slip and score the parts that will later connect. And I'm going to do that while they're still wet. Using the bowl which they'll eventually be attached to, I move the pieces around and figure out the final composition. This is a good time to consider the physics of your design. Make sure the weight won't make it topple. Also consider the shrinkage of the piece. Once your coils set up to leather hard, will they still be able to fit around your form? Now that the design is completely formed, I need to let the coils set up to become leather hard. This is especially important because they need to be super strong before I have to battle gravity when I attach them. You don't want them bending and warping and sagging. Make sure that your coil design is drawing in the exact shape that they will be when you attach them. Once they set up, they will crack and break if you flex them too much. I sprayed and bagged my bowl really tight so I could fit the coils perfectly to the contour of the bowl, making sure they set up in the perfect shape. And sometimes I'll put a patch of plastic bag with some water around the exact areas that I'll be slipping and scoring on later. And it makes the joining just a little bit easier. I had sprayed my piece and put it away for the night and the next day I check it out and it's nicely firm. It's a little bit on the hard side so I give it a good spray. And unfortunately I immediately snap it apart. Such is life. And that's okay, because in the end, it's just some dirt. Also, it's a pretty easy fix. That's one thing I love about clay. So I slip and score them back together and put a clay band-aid on the joint, making sure that it's very strong in the area where it already broke. Now 
Placing the design next to the bowl, I go ahead and mark the areas where the coils will attach to the bowl. Then I attach everything by gently yet firmly applying pressure. I use some fresh clay to make all the joints stronger. Because the coils are now leather hard, I score the areas before putting wet clay on top or else it'll detach and crack off in the kiln. I found some cardboard to prop up the coils with. I decided to raise the coils or actually lower them if the bowl is upside down or right side up. Oh, it's like the matrix, where are we? Anyway, the point is, is that I wanted a little bit of the rim to be exposed. So I didn't want the coils and the rim to be flush. I wanted the coils to be a little bit lower than the rim. And then I let it set up a bit, probably about 20 or so minutes. Once I can slide the cardboard out without the coil design cracking or sagging, I flip the bowl over very carefully. And it's looking pretty rough on this side. I know I'm gonna have to do some reconstructive surgery here, but I don't want the coils to break or collapse when I apply pressure. So I cut up a sponge to provide some support from beneath. And now I'll just carefully go about supporting joints with extra clay and cleaning up all the gunk. These rubber tip tools were my jam with this project. Their tips allowed me to get into all the tiny crevices my fingers couldn't fit into, and also allowed me to stay pretty gentle. And so there you have it, a wheel thrown bowl with a coil detail. And now I have no idea how to glaze it. So if you have suggestions, I would be beyond grateful to read them in the comments below. Tune in next time to learn how to alter a wheel thrown pot with slabs. If you enjoyed this demo, let me know by liking the video and I will make you some more. Thanks for watching and happy day.